Mm. Well, hello, Coffee Time friends. How y'all doing? This is John and Mama on Coffee Time with John and Mama. We are having simple, simple super simple supper tonight, for sure. Um, you know, we had salad, we had spaghetti. They're not watching me, honey. I can't see you. Huh? I can't see you cut the chicken. Oh. I'll point you down. Here's what Mama's saying. How are y'all doing this evening? It has been a great Monday here, and we're up to the 50s. We're up to 52 now. I'm cutting up uh, some of the chicken we had left over from uh, the spaghetti that we had yesterday. And this is going to be the southern fried part of our salad. And we're going to have uh, the rest of that salad and this chicken, and it's delicious. I even had an extra piece of toast, and I cut it up for some croutons here. So... There it is, folks. That is, and that's a little bit of grapes I cut up. There are, there's our uh, supper tonight. Here's that salad. It's still looking delicious. And, uh, yeah, Mom, you do that. You got it all together. Look at that. Now look at that salad. That is so fresh and delicious. And um, I kind of had this in the back of my mind yesterday is, well, that'll make a good southern fried chicken salad tomorrow for lunch, but we didn't eat that for lunch. And so it's gonna make a good southern fried chicken salad for supper. We'll go ahead and put those grapes in the salad. And then we'll have them. We love, we call them redos, leftover redos. So this is certainly not what we had yesterday with the same type of food. We still have spaghetti left for another night. Um, but we probably won't put chicken like that night. If we do, we can always just throw us some more of these delicious chicken tenders in the Easy Bake. And that made a pile of chicken. That was just two tenders. Um, look at that. Okay, well, Mom, I guess the smart thing would be to cut this tomato up since I got it out here. Yeah. Do y'all ever have those days where you, you really just don't feel like you need to be, you know... Unmonitored. I need heavy monitoring today. Oh, mercy. I've got it together now. Here we go. Let's cut, up a, cut us up a little tomato and get it ready for a salad. Are you being mean or just. No, I, I was taking that chicken off the cutting board so I could slice this tomato. As soon as I got the chicken out there, I was ready to turn this cutting board, cut board in and get it. Oops, sorry about that. Then I seen this tomato and I thought, oh yeah, I guess she was going to kind of cut that up. It's Monday. What can I say? Sometimes get back into the week, work week, even though you're off such a short amount of time. Didn't fly by to y'all this weekend. It seems like we went from Friday evening straight to Monday morning. Just like went to bed Friday night, didn't get Saturday, didn't get Sunday. I guess we did, didn't we? Hello there, Joyce. How are you? And hello, Jeannie. Hello from Indiana. Oh, I love Indiana. Hello, Mama and John from Utah. Oh, John, what's your all's weather like in Utah? Now, Mama and I are having maybe a mixed bag of goodie tonight uh, because we're having our mushroom tomatoes, too. Y'all know I ain't gonna let those go to waste. And I thought, hmm, that'd be good and warm and the salad would be good and cold. And it'll be just a good little blend. What do you reckon, Mama? I reckon it'll be fine with it. You reckon that'll be good? Yeah. Mama, I'm just gonna go and give you a salad tonight because- Just give me a little. How much? I want some cucumbers and grapes. Yes, ma'am. But I've cut them in half, Mama, less of a choking hazard. I know it's sure been good. Mama's mumbling tonight. You'll have to forgive <coughs> her. Good. I Mama good. says she don't mumble. I do mumble, but I can't help it. Hey. Sometimes I mumble to her, and she'll say, what? And I say, oh, I thought you can understand mumbles, because that's what you tell me all the time. Oh, he's being mean to me today. There you go, Mama. Okay. You want back on it? Yes, please. Sorry. Oh, yes, I want to turn to tomatoes, Mama. Sorry, I'm making so much noise with that. Here's you two of the center slices of the tomato, Mama. You're a good fellow at times. At times? Mm -hmm. 
Not all times, right? Okay, folks. You've seen us get this from start to finish right there. That didn't take no time. And we're just going to put a little bit of chicken. Hi from Texas, Debbie. How are you? Now, this is a, a delicious little... Uh, now, I didn't get any white cheese out, Mama. Well, I got the shredded cheddar. Do you want white cheese? Cheddar will probably be all right if you can reach it. I can. I want you to have plenty of protein, Mom. Oh, that's enough. I'm going to get me a knife. You need a knife. No, ma'am. That was just two tenders, and look, there was at least one left. Uh, and here's a little bit to the egg. Y'all ever eat this? I like to, sometimes this ain't leftovers. Sometimes this is what we start out with is a, is a southern fried chicken salad. We just take southern fried tenders and we uh, put them over a good salad. Sometimes it's a little bigger if it's the only meal we've had or going to have. Put a little bit of this fresh grated cheddar cheese. I need Dr. Hayward. I picked you up. I wouldn't leave you behind. Look at this fancy bowl. Look at there. Sterling silver. Sterling silver. Aluminum furl. This is what that bread was in. It's a little piece of toast. Left over from yesterday's lunch. So I just made a bowl out of it. You'd pay good money for a bowl shaped like that. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> you pay big money for a sterling silver bowl in that shape. We'll pray over it and you can catch her before you pray. Oh, well, let's pray first. Then okay. Dearly Father, we thank you for this meal. We thank you for the precious hands you prepared it, dear Lord. And I always ask you to remember all the prayer requests, so spoken and unspoken, dear Lord. Be with us as we go our ways, and dear Lord, just keep a hedge protection about us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now look here. This is those tomatoes. Now we did add a little juice to them today because that macaroni's will drink that juice. You'll have uh, you'll have mostly macaroni's. Won't you, Mama? There's cucumber over there, extra. Besides what we have in here, if you want it. Oh, you know that I cut up yesterday and put in there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go straight for the tomatoes. Straight for the tomatoes. And the macaronis. Mmm. Maggie heard me up. She heard that first. If, if she hears, that's it. Signal is made. First fork or spoon that hits the, the corral wire. If you didn't watch yesterday, you miss Mama's macaroni and tomatoes. Mama, tell them how you made them. Oh, that was the extra macaroni. And you said, why, well, she can make macaroni and tomatoes out of it right now. Uh, so that's what I And did. we ate them with our spaghetti. No, it wasn't with spaghetti. We had it with the um, macaroni salad. Uh, macaroni salad. We had macaroni salad and macaroni and tomatoes. Tell them how you made it, Mama, because some of them didn't get a seat. All I did was add a, a quart jar of home canned tomatoes and uh, left over the extra macaroni. It wasn't left over. It's too, it's too much. And salt and pepper yeah, and just a little tad of bacon grease, as Johnny said. Is that a measurement? I said, yeah, just a little bit on the... About a half a teaspoon of bacon grease to flavor this whole thing. You probably wouldn't have to do that if, you, if you're if you not into any kind of bacon. Uh, and it may be healthier without it, but it sure just gives it a little flavor and a little taste. And that's all you do to it, folks, and let it cook a little while. And then, just like us, the next day or so, you'll probably have to add a little bit more tomato juice because something happens, those macaronis just drink it up. They drink all the juice. It's like the... Macaroni salad. It drinks mm -hmm. all the mayonnaise. It's dry. I love it with a little bit of black pepper, a little bit of salt. I could eat this every day. I love them that well. They were good. Aren't they delicious? Mm -hmm. They're tasting pretty good with this salad right now. What is 
salad. Soup. It's a soup kind of thing with salad. It's warm. Salad's cold. And that toast wasn't hard still enough. It's a little soft, but it's tasty. And it's good with this chicken. I'm, I'm eating the cans by day. You all got on here after I mentioned what we used. And now y'all got me. I might go to the store and buy every, every dressing y'all mentioned because every one of them sounded so good. Um, honey mustard. I don't think I've tried Ken's honey mustard. Uh, Italian you said was delicious. I've not tried the Italian. Mm-hmm. But I'm a goner because this is so good. This is so good. I would hate to miss those others. Messy Marvin had to drop salad on her. Um, I haven't heard him anything about blue cheese or Roquefort. I don't know. Sometimes those aren't as good in the bottle. I like those fresh, but I don't know about a bottle of those. They tend to get a little, you know, strong. Mm. Let's see here, what? Tony. Tony says, have you ever made scalloped tomatoes? My grand, um, grandson loves them. Um, we cook them often. Now, Mama, have you made scalloped tomatoes? We make some things tomato -y, but Is there any of those things called scalloped? No, I don't know. I make sweetened tomatoes with bread and stuff. I don't know though. I made it, I don't know what. Tony, just because it's got tomato in the recipe means I like it. So I'll look up a recipe for that if you or you can share your recipe. And we'll try some scallop tomatoes because I love them. Tomatoes, that is. So I'm sure scalloped would just be another way to love them. We make um, tomato. I make a tomato pie that I made on here with actual pie crust and all that. And uh, I call that tomato pie. I call what well, Mama calls tomato pie. I call it scalloped tomatoes. Or um, we make it. I don't. It's probably not what you're talking about, Tony. But we make it. With tomatoes, sugar, and light bread, and sugar with butter. In a nine by nine, well, you can make it however you want it. Brenda says she loves the Ken's honey mustard with chicken tenders or ham. My mommy made it growing up. She just cooked the tomatoes in a kettle with the a little salt and stuff, and just a little bit of sugar. And then she would break up, the, maybe they'd make them real juicy, and she would break up light bread and just drop in it like dumplings. Mm -hmm. Linda says that they make a good balsamic vinaigrette. Mm -hmm. And we love that. So what she makes not really what we make. Mm -hmm. She... She didn't bake it or put it in no pan. It was just... She just made it in a big kettle. Uh -huh. And put the tomatoes, let them boil good, put salt and pepper, and then drop white bread in there. A little sugar in it. See, mine, <clears throat> scalloped tomatoes, they call it, the light bread browns on top. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. mm. Sherry, Sherry Front, if you were anywhere near, you would just have to come over here and get some macaroni and tomatoes. Sherry says, I have never had macaroni and tomatoes. I don't have any home canned tomatoes to make it with. Well, Sherry, you don't have to have home canned tomatoes. You can make macaroni and tomatoes out of canned tomatoes. Uh, crushed tomatoes would be my choice. I take a can of crushed tomatoes from your, from your favorite local store or stewed tomatoes, and uh, make it some elbow macaroni, add some salt and pepper, and just a little bit of a piece of bacon if you want to. You don't even have to have that. That's just a little extra taste. 
but uh, macaroni and tomatoes is a must try. My mom used to crush tomatoes and noodles. Hated it, but now, as a, a child, I, and now I love it. Oh yeah, I love it too. Hey Karen, um, my mom used to can tomatoes, bread, sugar, onion, green peppers on top of the stove. That sounds good. Mommy, John, it sounds like mommy's, except she didn't use the peppers, the green peppers. Oh, Debbie, thank you. Debbie says she thought of me today. She found a, a dressing that was Vidalia onion with summer tomatoes. Mmm. Mm -hmm. I make mine with canned tomatoes. Sherry, this is another Sherry. Sherry uh, Gasman says she makes hers with canned tomatoes. We have made ours with canned tomatoes. When we didn't have them, or was running low, and we decided something else. You can uh, get the whole canned tomatoes and mash those up, and they're similar to home canned tomatoes. Uh-huh. Hey, Diane, thank you so much. You all are definitely a bright spot in our day, too. When is it really cold when it makes milk? Milk butter and macaroni, yeah. When it's really cold, we make milk macaroni soup. Sounds to me like it's a lot like macaroni and cheese, just no cheese. That sounds good, because that's what we have, butter, milk, and macaroni. As Mama says she had that a lot. That sounds very tasty. Just join. What are y'all eating? Hey, Monica. We are having leftover salad, which is beautiful, and it held up so well. We can keep it in the bowl, just what we served it in yesterday. And I made even made some croutons out of the leftover piece of a bread that mama made and I took two of the chicken tenders chopped them up and we've still got another one left here and put it over that salad so we're having southern fried chicken salad tonight it's one of our favorites we have that a lot in the summer but uh, tonight it's a leftover sometimes we start out with it we we just mix a big salad make some tenders chop them up and put them on there when we go out to a restaurant or one restaurant we used to go to that was what we ordered. That mm -hmm. was how we ordered. Grilled chicken is good too, same way. My grandma made macaroni and tomatoes and a little brown sugar. Ooh. Ooh, I haven't tried that. One. We will try that. I don't know if we have any left over. Mm -hmm. We'll add some sugar. We'll have some left over. We'll add some brown sugar to this. We may find, find a new thing. There's nothing better than warm, fresh tomatoes out of the garden. Oh, Kim, I know. Uh, we used to, my granny used to take the Tupperware salt shaker. And the reason I said the Tupperware salt shaker is it was the tall hourglass with the lid on it. That's the only one that would lift the house. We could take it outside for watermelon. We could take it outside for tomatoes in the garden. She would put it in her apron and pack it around. But you didn't take any of her other stuff outside the house. Especially glass, cause they get hurt. Nothing. If you took a spoon out, well, you could never ask to take a spoon out, because the answer would be no. But if you ever got caught with one, even eating a bowl of ice cream on the front porch, it better be plastic. If you took a good spoon out, the question would be asked. Just who do you think you are bringing my good spoons out here? Now you get that right back in there and get you a to-go spoon. Granny called all plastic stuff to go stuff. So, you didn't take her good stuff out. But you could take that one type of our salt shake out. Do you remember that, Mama? Mm -hmm. Hey, Pat Chris from Ohio. How are you? I love a good cold wedge salad, Sabrina. Those are good. Hello, Betty. Ferris, how are you? So what are y'all up to? What are y'all eating tonight? It's Monday night. What's your Monday night go-to? Maybe we'll have that one night. You've worked or you've been busy. You've run errands. What have you done today? It's Monday night, supper time. What are you going cook? Your granny was smart. Yo, mm -hmm. Rose, who was that? You went too fast. Mm -hmm. 
I swear, at least sometimes these comments just vanish. <laughs> yeah, Granny was smart. I had strict women. Strict role models. Mm-hmm. That song show here was for the picnic table. At our house too. Yep, Kim, you didn't you didn't just pack out everything. Making homemade chicken nuggets, baked potatoes and asparagus. Mm. Ooh, we love all that stuff. Lorraine, we love all that. We love asparagus. You ever had asparagus wrapped in bacon? Sherry Connor says she moved to her great her son's sandbox apart and it was full of spoons. Yep. Full of spoons. <laughs> I remember sneaking a few spoons out. We had baby back ribs and steamed broccoli. Mm, Brenda, that sounds good. We're having beans and cornbread fried potatoes mm. and coleslaw. Darla. That sounds wonderful. Mama, you feel okay? Your foot color is not real good tonight. Michelle, she's not wearing any lipstick. I'm not eating. <laughs> Are you wearing lipstick, Mama? Mm -mm. Are you feeling bad, Mama? I just took a headache yesterday. <laughs> well, take it back. I didn't want to take it. It just kind of uninvited. <clears throat> well, I didn't know you had a headache, Mama. It ain't one of them sick headaches, is it? Oh, no, I couldn't be eating if I had one of them. <laughs> what kind of headache is it, Mom? It's just like sinus, you know. I got out this evening, and I think that's what triggered it. My dad used to have a brown headache. <laughs> yeah, that's what he called it. And <clears throat> he just called it an old brown headache. I don't know. Maybe Granny came up with that, or if it just meant it was not feeling just right, kind of down. But he, it was like it was a specific kind of headache for him. Mama, you feel okay? Michelle, she says she's got a little headache tonight. Ground beef patty with gravy. Oh, Anna, that's a good one. Hello, John and Mama. I ordered a pizza tonight. Oh, that's a good day, Sheila. Sometimes it, it's just... On Monday nights is a good night to take, get carry out. Everybody hollers Friday. Friday Leftover spaghetti and stuff. I think Monday might be the best one. <laughs> we never did do take out on Friday as much unless there was something our family was coming over or was going to have a little get together or something. But Monday nights we would get take out or Tuesday nights used to be a big go out to eat night here. Uh, we had a restaurant in town that had pizza. Buffet on Tuesday night, and Dad thought, if it's Tuesday, you really ought to get the pizza buffet. Like they say, what is it, Taco Tuesday, he believes in Pizza Tuesday. Mm-hmm. He was serious. These grapes are good in here, Mama. Mm -hmm. I really like grapes in my salad, or craisins, or... Grapes. We didn't get that topper out tonight. No, we didn't. These tomatoes are definitely store bought, but they're pretty good. They're pretty good. I'm reminding you, water flowers. Alexis minded Mama to water some flowers. That puts the memory in Mama's head that. The flowers need water, and that's the indoor flowers. Now, in the summertime, that's a good reminder to water the flowers on the front, too. So, what have you done today, Mom? It's give you a headache. I think going out, it gave me the headache. You went to town? Yeah, I got in the window. Mm. 
Well, it's just 50 something degrees, Mama. It was 40 something when I went out. 40 and you went outdoors? 47, 48. What'd you do, Mama? Take cookbooks? Yeah. Had to go to the post office. And I, I have no more cookbooks to mail. And I've got some in there that's. I've got the envelopes all fixed out, but I don't have books to put in. So we're in the gap between having cookbooks and the reorder getting here. They have told me the reorder should be here by mid-April, which is just a couple of weeks away because we're at the end of March. And um, we got all the cookbook orders that we had up until when? About the mid of March, 16th, 18th or something. I don't know the postmark on them. I don't know when they was actually... And um, so they're mailed out. So we got a few more waiting. I got about 10 envelopes ready that I don't have books for. And then the mail I got today was a lot, about 20. So. so there's a few out, folks. There's going to be a little delay. So don't get nervous. We will have them there just as soon as we get them. Like Mama says, she's done got your envelopes ready. So the day they come in, all she has to do is open the boxes and put the books in, seal them up and take them to the post office. So it's a pretty quick process once they get them here. Uh, so we're in the gap again, but it won't be as long this time, no. Lord willing. The other time it was the, the book place, the publishing place, lack of supplies. They couldn't get they couldn't, supplies. They couldn't get what they needed to make books. Yeah, so that was the big hold up that made it so long the other time. Hopefully it'll be a couple of weeks. We'll get them right in the mail as soon as we get them. Well, Lisa Chapel, you're just across the hill. Where she? Wartburg. Mm -hmm. She's made. Who was it? I make, it says, Mary says she's making leftovers from all the weekend meals. And meat, uh, and or meatless Mondays. That's a good idea. That's kind of what we're doing is eating leftovers from the weekend meals. Hello for North Carolina, Angie. Angela, how are you? Did somebody got a hey mama tonight? Hey, John. Oh, we got a hey mama and a letter. I left it in there. It's folded and taped. Lisa Leonard, that we call it Italian feast. We stole that from Shoney's. We'll give them all the credit. Uh, she's made the spaghetti with the chicken that says it's delicious and yum. What do we call it? We call it Italian feast or every once in a while we'll say, let's have uh, Shoney's spaghetti tonight. So we stole that from Shoney's. And someone posted on here last night, at least at their Shoney's. Now I'm not speaking for all Shoney's. She said that she still orders the tag and face at her Shoney's, and it's not on the menu, but they will fix it for you. So if we've you, not been in we've Shoney's not. in so many years now. <laughs> no, not two years. Well, almost three. Years. Hey, Dave Hill, thank you for that, Dave. Dave says happy birthday. Tomorrow is my birthday. Mm -hmm. I've already got some wonderful cards. You all are so wonderful. Um, birthdays are a blessing. I used to dodge them around, and you know, but they are. And we have to be uh, thankful for each and every one of them. Uh, you know, little kids, if you ask them, how old are you? They'll say, you know, I'm four and a half. Or I'm nine and three quarters and I'll be ten. And, you know, they're just so excited. And uh, then you get all excited about turning, after you hit ten, you get double digits. Then you get sixteen so you can drive. Then you get 18, you can be an adult. Then I guess the next one will be 21. And you don't really bind up through the 20s, but once people hit the 30, they start stop bragging so much about it. And then they go on through the 30s and their 40s, not mentioning much about it. And then the older you get, the more you hear people saying things like, I'm 84, and if the Lord lets me live two more months, I'll be 85. Hmm. Or I'm 92, and if I'm here come June, I'll be 93. This kind of goes full circle. 
you know, we're excited. And I guess as we get older, we appreciate those birthdays and we're thankful. Oh, yeah. And uh, this has been a, a, you know, the last two years has been trying and hard on everybody. And so many people have lost their lives and didn't get to see those next birthdays. And it just made me more appreciative of every birthday, of every day, of every, every moment. And I'm just thankful to be able to have another birthday. So I will say, Lord lets me live to tomorrow. What time, Mama? 11? 11, 11, 20 in the night. 11, 20 at night. I will have celebrated another milestone birthday. They're all milestones to me. So thank you all so much. You all are just so kind. And thank you for those folks that have sent me cards and uh, gifts. I've got some. I'll be showing them. Uh, in the next, we got an open mail, Mama. We got an open mail. Mm -hmm. We won't try to do it tonight. Mama's got a headache. I'm gonna get Mama some brighter lipstick. Mama, you do look. Uh, where you've had your hair did, you look blonder, which makes you look paler. Well, I can't wear lipstick. I ate it all, Connie. What I'm gonna have to do, Mama, is get you uh, one of them spray tans. I could probably do it. Rustellian's got a nice golden brown color. I don't think you'll be spraying me. Let me tell y'all something. This is a true story. So, when I was, I was grown, I was probably 18, 19 years old, Mama was going somewhere on Saturday, and we had a huge flower bed out in front of our house. And the year before that, Mama had spent a lot of money. Well, for Mama, it was a lot of money. Uh, but we had a, a lady here in our neighborhood that uh, had some blue rug junipers. You know those evergreens that run and they get blue? And she had some um, global use. They're a beautiful green plant, too. And she had sold them really reasonably. And Mama had thought, well, this is my opportunity to get some good bushes and plants. So she had bought up enough to put all through her flower bed, and they were really pretty. And we have something here called Moody Grass, or what else do they call it? It runs, and it runs under the ground, and it roots. And you, you'll pull it up, and they will be uh, from six foot or eight foot long, and every... So often, grass will be coming up. And it would be fine, except it turns brown and ugly. So we had rocks around this big flower bed that Mama had. And um, that old moody grass that got in it. And it was late in the season, and it had turned brown and looking bad. And Mama said, uh, if you ain't going to do nothing today, you get out here and pull these weeds out of this flower bed. I said, yes, ma'am, I'll do that. So I went out and I pulled and pulled and pulled and pulled and I pulled for about an hour. And I was quite frankly tired of it. And I thought, I've not got nowhere. This grass is horrible. So I thought, I'll just light it. It'll burn right around these rocks. I could picture it in my mind just going right around them rocks, around that flower bed, being gone. I lit it. It went right around them rocks like I thought it would. And then it jumped over in that flower bed. And did you all know that mulch will burn? Well, it will. And your blue rug junipers will burn. <laughs> and and it, it lit Mama's blue rug. Well, it didn't light them. It just got them really hot. Because that fire blew it, you know, it had grass and, and mulch in it. And it, it was pretty hot. Well, I noticed once I got the fire out, and I rinsed it off with the water hose, I noticed that the blue rug jennifers looked better than they'd ever looked. They really did. They were beautiful. They were glossy, bright green, and they were so pretty. And, and um, that was that day. Mama came home, she said, that bed looks good. What'd you do? I said, I just burnt that grass out, Mama. It didn't hurt it. Well, I didn't think about that. Uh-huh. The next three days came and it started getting brown and dying. And I knew, oh, I knew trouble was in the horizon. I went to TGNY then. Do you all remember TGNY? 
for you young folks, TGNY was our Walmart in the in the eighties. And I found something called Rustolian Evergreen Spray Paint. And I bought two cans and I come home and for the next two weeks I painted bushes. Every time a brown spot would show up, I'd run out there and spray it. Shh. Another brown spot I'd spray it. Shh. I've done that forever. To all the burnt evergreen died and fell off. And uh, I kept it sprayed. And Mama, I don't think she knew about it <clears throat> until I confessed a year later. But let me tell you, it's a hard job planting ever, evergreen in your yard. <laughs> and I kept it spray painted. <clears throat> well, when I came clean, when I seen that was living the next year, you know, they, they made it. Um, I told Mama. And she said, I have never heard of the bee in my life. Well, she went out there immediately. And inspect, she said, well, they're fine now. I said, I've not had to spray them in months, Mama. They're good. <laughs> well, we got to tell that story. Mama, you know how Mama tells stuff to embarrass me from her friends? Well, now you're telling this on Well, she friends. told everybody who came to the yard. That was a part of the four or five goodbyes. Well, the southern goodbyes. You know, she would tell three. She'd get up there to the car and say, let me tell you what he done. And she'd tell them the story about how I burned her flower bed up and had to paint. Well, lo and behold, it wasn't long after that, it was on TV. If you have brown spot, and they sprayed this little green stuff on there, and it brought the plant right back, and it looked good, and I thought, I could have invented that. I had been doing that for a long time now, because I burnt Mama's flower bed up. Well, I want to tell you, those blue red junipers, they took off, they grew, all that stuff grew, and later on, we had to get a guy with a bulldozer to come and bulldoze that mess up, because... Guess what? That grass didn't go nowhere either. It was there every year, year after year after year. Oh, so Mama finally said, forget that mess. Just it was it was lots of years later. And she said, Just forget that mess and she we took care of all of it. Well actually <clears throat> we didn't destroy it. Some people came and drug up the trees and took them. Mama said, You can have them if you can get them up. So they did. But anyway, that's my story on how I invented that stuff and didn't patent it. And somebody, Mama's probably told somebody who thought, oh, that would work, and they patented it and probably oh, made a fortune. <laughs> so that's one of my little tales from years ago when I burnt Mama's evergreens up. <laughs> I ain't done that in a while, have a Mama. No, you're getting better about far. <laughs> we did burn the, when we was younger than that, we was probably about 15 or 16. Now, kids, don't listen to this mess, and let me tell you, I am a cautionary tale. Don't do this stuff. <laughs> we did catch the backyard on fire one time. And we weren't allowed to play with matches or nothing, but we were camping. And Mama did let us have a little fire, and we, well, well the whole, you know, it, it went quick, you know. It's made a stove out of paraffin. Yes, and, we and did. And that's what caught it on fire. Well, that story goes like this, and then I'll hush, because you know how I get it. The, the thing said to take a tuna can. You took a tuna can, you rinsed it out good. You let it dry and then you cut cardboard about that thick, just so it would fit down inside the tuna can. You rolled it up tight on a pencil and you stuck it down that tuna can, let it loose and it would make a coil. And then you took gulf cannon wax and melted it and you poured it down in there and leave about that much of the cardboard up for a week. And you could light that and it would come out, it would light. And then you would take the can lid and you take a nail and you drive a hole in it and put it on a wire and make you a controller. So you can control the flame. You could turn that flame really low and all you do is just set it on a brick, put you something over it, and put a, and you could have a fire. And we thought how a wonderful stove. That stove. We thought how wonderful that was. So we made us one and it worked. It worked real well. And we got to contemplate in our little 14 year old brains and I said, you know what? This is my nephew about Jonathan age. If this tuna can would work, I bet a pipe hang would really work. <laughs> it did, folks, just like I thought. So we took us a pipe hang and we aluminum coiled our car board. aluminum pipe hang. We coiled our cardboard up, we put it in there, we got mm, lots of wax. We filled that whole thing full, we lit it, and it melted the pipe hang. <laughs> And now we've got this much wax going everywhere. 
it was like an erupting volcano to our little 14 year old minds. And, and wax was going everywhere and everywhere the wax went, the fire went. And as the, it, it got, but we grabbed the water hose and we put it out. Mama come home and wanted to know why we burned a big spot in the backyard. Well, that was why. So don't be playing around with stuff, kids. Take it from me. You don't have to learn every lesson for yourself. Some lessons can be learned by someone older Just telling listen. you. Just listen. <laughs> so I caution you, don't play with fire. It's hard to paint, plant, paint bushes for two or three months. It's hard to explain to your daddy why there's a big burnt spot in the backyard. And that's how Mama would do it, too. Mama, when she came home and found that burnt spot, she asked about it. What you do? I said, Mama, this fire just went everywhere. We, we better get it. Well, okay. Well, you can explain that to your daddy when he gets home. That was the punishment right there. Dad didn't do too much, but he did want to know why it was out there messing with fire. And then when we showed him the tuna can, how good it worked, and he said, well, don't do that other thing no more. Just use the tuna can. <laughs> Folks, anybody got a hey mama? So Have they? Anybody got a hey mama? I love Girl Scouts, Sabrina said. I was a, a, a Boy Scout. And, you know, they taught y'all kinds of stuff. Actually, I think I was a Cub Scout around here. I don't think we ever got up to Boy. We never to boy. been a Boy Scout leader. I was uh, not up here leader for Cub Scouts. Angela, she, she was a little bit upset over her backyard being burned. If it had been in the front yard, I'd really get in trouble. But she just turned around and said, well, you can explain that to you, Daddy. I guess she feared there wasn't nothing you can do about burnt grass. Uh, you can put a wick in Crisco for a candle uh, for two days. Sure, really. That would be neat. So if you have an emergency. I also heard you can burn candles. Yeah, Sandra, we were out there making a Oh, that was a lot of stuff we did we shouldn't have done. Hey, Mama. This comes from Tracy. It says, hey, Mama. was Why was the doctor always mad? Tracy, I can't see the answer. Send us the answer, Tracy. Why was the doctor always mad? Always mad. mad. Well, thank you. Uh, Pamela, tomorrow's my birthday. I was a dog. Tracy, I can't see your answer. Hey, Mama, this comes from Lynn Clip. Lynn Clip, is that a, did I destroy your name? C L E P P. Lynn says, Hey, Mama, why did the ducklings fall on the sidewalk? Why did the ducklings fall on the sidewalk? Lynn, that is hilarious. They wobble to the side. <laughs> no, Mama, because he tripped on a quack. He tripped on a quack. I love that, Lynn. Oh, uh, that is a good one. That was a cute one. Is today your birthday? No, tomorrow about 11.20 at night will be my official birthday. Uh, he is almost born on my granddad. Oh, Rebecca, your boys caught the creek on fire with camping fuel. I never did do that. But never thought of it, or we would have. You and Keith got into a lot of stuff. Uh-huh. I don't know, Mama. I must have run around with a bad crowd because it seemed like everybody I ran around with got me in trouble. Yeah, it does sound bad, don't it? <laughs> everybody I ran around with got me in trouble. Mm. It wasn't me. Could you figure it would be the other way around? It could have been. It could have been, Mama. Hey, Mama. This is from Kathy. Kathy, what's your last name? V-O... V-O-I-G-T. Okay, Kathy says, Hey, Mama, why do you call it... What do you call it when the cows run for the barn? Time to be fed. Uh, uh, Kathy says it's called utter confusion. Utter confusion. <laughs> that has been some good ones tonight. Utter confusion. Thank you, Angel Britt. She says, happy birthday and have a good night. 
Oh, your dad's 85 today, Vicky. Well, tell him happy birthday. Happy, happy from me and Mama. Happy birthday. <sighs> Rebecca Rice, your grandson's birthday is tomorrow. Well, I bet he is a fine young man. Tell him happy birthday. Tell me and him share his birthday. Thank you, Sissy. I will. What do we all eat tonight, Nancy? We have leftover salad and that chicken that we had from the spaghetti, and we put it on top. I had a southern fried chicken salad, and we had some macaroni and tomatoes. Uh, Janice uh, is telling you, Mama, he gets a chocolate cake. A chocolate cake. Do I get a chocolate cake, Mama? Yeah, a half of one. I get a half of one. You don't have a baker. Let me tell you what my smart mama does. So, like I tell you all the time, most times it's just me and mama here. Used to, we could bake anything and put it here on this table and we'd have company, we'd have folks by and it all get gone. Mama's had a hard time in the past two years getting used to that. But for the past two years, she has made me, I love a layer cake for my birthday. Aries, somebody says, yep, that's us. Uh, I love chocolate layer cake because I just like those double layers. I like that. And then ice and then chocolate, then ice. Mmm, sounds so good. So Mama takes a, just a regular round cake pan. She makes half a cake box. And she just cuts it in half. Ice and that half. Stacks the other one on top. Ice and the other half. And you have your stack cake. You just have half of one. And it's very easy. And uh, we don't need a whole one. And we still get the benefit of the whole uh, double layer cake. Hey, Mama. How do you call a half deaf duck? A half deaf duck. How do you call a half deaf duck? Uh, I don't know. Hey, duck! <laughs> I was going to say sign language. <laughs> I love it. Hey, it says right there, you must say this really loud. Oh! Martha Fiddler, that is hilarious. That is great. <laughs> How you doing? Uh, Linda says, what did you ask for for your birthday? Linda, just another birthday. That's all I asked for. Give me one and give me one more. Uh, every year. Hey, Mom, what do penguins sing after they bury their dead in the snow? Jane, that is not right. <laughs> See you in the springtime. Jane Hutchins, that sent this mama. What do, you, what do penguins sing after they bury their dead in the snow? Freeze the jolly good <laughs> <laughs> If you If you didn't like that, Jane made me do it. <laughs> really? Jane, that was funny. <laughs> Freeze the jolly good <laughs> oh, my son's 21st birthday is today. Well, tell him happy birthday from me and Mama. 21 is a good age. Uh, see, he's probably proud of that 21. He'll be telling everybody. <laughs> happy blessed birthday. Well, thank you, Jay Brooks. Appreciate that. Your sister caught the closet on fire. Oh, no, I never did play with anything in the house. Wilted lettuce and bacon grease, Janice. Mm. Oh, yes, I love Somebody asked last night, said, we want to see the onions and the lettuce. People, the lettuce didn't make it. The, wow. Mama planted lettuce, but it turned into bird feed. Uh, the onions are still out there, aren't they, Mama? Yeah, they might be a few pieces of lettuce. The lettuce seeds got dug up by the little birdies. I don't know how they knew it was under there. They must have seen one stray and started digging and found some more. But uh, Or they may just be sitting there watching Mama plant them. But the lettuce seed didn't come up. There might be a few little pieces. I watched that bird just scratch and eat and scratch and eat. <laughs> Mama, you're going to put a screen over. We'll put a screen over the next batch we try. Mama's decided now uh, that she's going to do some different flavors of lettuce. What is birthday dinner going to be tomorrow? Mm -hmm. no, Jean Corn uh, Connell. 
I don't know, Mama. What am I having for my birthday dinner? Well, we just had everything that you like. Everything. Beef roast and... Now, that's our usual, but I don't want that again. How old are you going to be, Sarah? I'm going to be 21, just like that other fella. I'll be 51. My birthday was the 24th. I turned 63. Well, happy birthday, April. Happy belated birthday. Um... I don't know, Mama. I'm not picky about birthday dinner. I like my chocolate cake. And I like soda salad. But we don't need both. And since Mama's watching her sugar and doing such a good job of drinking zero Sprites and drinking zero Cokes, I think we can just opt for a little bit of chocolate cake tomorrow, Mama. Well, I thought stuff for you soda salad, too. But you don't have to make that, Mama. That's too much work on you. And that's an awful lot of sweet stuff. I'll just make half a batch of soda salad. Mama wants some soda salad. I don't need it that much either. Uh, yeah, I don't know what we'll have for the main dish. Um, I could go for some pork chops, mashed potatoes, and pork and beans. I can handle that. Mama says she can handle that. I love that meal. As you know, you know how sometimes you don't realize stuff, and then somebody points it out to you. That one night when Sherry told me, said, you have a lot of favorites, John. Every time I think about it, I think Sherry is so right because I have a lot of favorites. This is spaghetti. What we had yesterday is one of my favorites. I love spaghetti with that little bit of chicken on it. I love pork chops, mashed potatoes, and pork and beans. That's simple and easy, but I love it. Um, My daddy always wanted beef roast, potatoes, mm -hmm. and... Gravy and green beans and coleslaw and rolls. I like that too. Bread. He wanted that at her birthday. I like that too. Or tomato gravy. I would love some of that. Um, I'm not hard to please on my mama. No. I mean, if, if it's for prepared and ready to go, I can make do. Um, you know, it's and then another thing. It's kind of like when you go out to eat somewhere. Sometimes they get it wrong. And you think, ugh. You know, if it's edible and something you can have, it's probably just go ahead and eat it. Hopefully, it won't be your last meal. Hopefully, the Lord will bless you with many more. Um, and those folks have a hard time. I know they do. So, most of the time, I just sort of eat it and go on. Because that's, you know, I just hate to make a fuss or anything. And usually, I'm hungry. And I say, okay, this will be it. I'm all right with this. Unless it's something you're allergic to. And I don't eat that. Folks, Mom and I are going to say... You don't look 51. Oh, well, thank you, Roberta. I'm glad. <laughs> I think. His young I don't mommy had him. His young mommy mm -hmm. had him. You know, Mama's family. I have two aunts that are still alive. That's all I have any Mama. Yeah, all of us. My brothers and sisters are still. And I had uncles and um, Mama's brothers. And my oldest aunt, she smoked since she was 12 years old. She lived to 73. And you would never have known it. Her skin was pretty. She you looked young. And uh, I often wonder, you know, what would she look like if she hadn't have smoked? But uh, my older, uh, Mama's older sister, she looks young. People guess her in her early 60s. She looks 10 years younger than me. She's older than Mama. I ain't going to tell you her age. She may be watching. But um, she definitely doesn't look old her age at all. Mama. And Mama's baby sister, uh, she looks young. So their family don't age. Even my uncles, they all, uh, my oldest uncle, he he had grayish hair right before he died, didn't he? But he had brown hair my whole life. And my other uncle did too. Uh, he looked real young. So uh, they age well. I hope I got a gene or two of that. Uh, to age well. Did a mama. Mr. Rundell on me, I didn't get You that. aged. <laughs> mama, you don't look 73. You don't look a day over 72. I thank you. <laughs> no, you look young, mama. You're a young chick. Yeah. I always hope to be as young as mama someday. Uh, my cake for my birthday is always German chocolate. D uh, Douglas Tucker, I like German chocolate cake. I really do. But uh, my favorite is just chocolate, chocolate. And I just want milk chocolate icing on top of there. Well, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for those birthday wishes. Um, but, yeah, they age well, and I hope that carries through. Mm -hmm. Mama made me pork chops, 
slow cooker with pineapple rings mm -hmm. and bell peppers on top. Oh, that sounds good. Jeannie, that sounds real good. I am 20, I am 77, have a sister who's 96 and one that's 90. Well, Amy, you are so blessed. It is blessed. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you, Tanya. You know, Mama and I have been off the norm this week. We've made Ruby Slipper cake. We've had hamburgers, hot dogs. What else? We had a, a, a barbecue sandwiches. We've had spaghetti. I think it's time for some mashed potatoes and something, Mama. We'll work on that tomorrow. I tell you what, Mama, you fix your favorite for my birthday and that'll make me happy. Whatever you want. You've made me macaroni and tomatoes. That's what I said. I've made your favorite. I know. Already. It's been the birthday the week. Chicken. It's been the birthday week. Mama, it's beautiful. Well, thank you, Kim. Kim Johnson, I think she's she's a mighty pretty lady. A 73-year-old woman. I wish we could all sing happy birthday to you. And watch you blow out your candles. Well, uh -huh. Kathy, um... Ever since that uh, fire episode, I ain't allowed to have no candles. <laughs> <laughs> I like Coca Cola; it's delicious. Oh, we! I don't know if I like it or not, but I was I was told I liked it from the time I was born on up, and now I do love it. So uh, my daddy was a Coca Cola man through and through, and uh, we had the Coca Colas. But Good. you never did drink cokes when you was little. You drank uh, milk and juice. I've you? never. He's never I, had a habit like me. I've never had a pop habit. I'll drink pop, but I don't have to have it. I can go a long time without it and not even think about it. Um, I don't like coffee, and I didn't always like coffee. But here's the weird thing about me. My mom and daddy here, never drank they never drank coffee. Mama was a, a, a sweet tea drinker, and she was a hot tea drinker. And Dad never touched coffee that I ever know of. Or tea. Or tea. He drank Coca-Cola's and Meliella's. Um, and he didn't drink much water either. Um, so I don't know how. I, I, when I started working in the school system, they had coffee all the time. A bunch of teachers always going to have some coffee. And um, I would start drinking some. And I liked it pretty good. And the more I drank, the more I liked it. And the more I liked it, the more I drank of it. And so I've been drinking coffee for 40 years, I guess. I used to, I bought my first personal coffee maker when I was 15 or something, Mom. Maybe younger. And Mom said, what you buy that for? I said, because I'm going to drink some coffee. Got me a can of coffee. It's got my very own filters, my very own drip percolator, and I was in business. Mama would say every morning when I went, that coffee sure does smell good, but I just can't stand the taste of it. Well, she said that right on up until a year or so back when I started perking it on the stove all the time. I used to only perk it on the stove or have perk coffee every once in a while. I always just used the drip because it was quick and easy. And uh, I still don't drink it much every once in a while. But you time. drink it. Right on the daily. Yeah. And when I started perking it on the stove, she said, that smells awful good. So we'll try some, Mama. So she tried it with a little bit of French vanilla creamer. And she's, she drinks it about every day. About a morning cup. She ain't drinking all day, though. Uh, your mama has a sweet smile. She does. Comes from a sweet heart and a sweet soul, Kathy. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Um, are you an only child, Jean? I am. Yeah. Uh, mama miscarried a few times. Uh, so... Uh, I would have had some brothers and sisters probably, or more brothers or more sisters or something. Um, when I was younger, I didn't really, I wasn't one of those kids that wanted a younger kid to play with. My friend had an older sister, and I always wanted an older sister because she took him plus she could drive. And I thought, if I had an older sister, she could drive me around. <laughs> You couldn't get your older sister. <laughs> so that's what I always thought I needed was an older sister to take care of me when Mama wasn't home. Or when Mama wouldn't take me somewhere, I could beg the, my older sister to take me. I took you about everywhere she wanted to go. Mama got a new hair that looks beautiful. 
Thank you, Miss Sheila. Um, but the perk coffee smells so good. Have y'all started perking any yet? Uh, Miss Pamela brought sent me that uh, percolator that plugs in. So I think I'm uptown now. I can come in here, make my coffee, put in my percolator, go take my shower, get ready, come back, and I've got hot coffee waiting on me. It's almost as good as having a Hazel in the house. Y'all know who Hazel is from Hazel on the 1950s sitcoms. <laughs> she always has her little percolator and she always says, you want some coffee, Mr. B? And she comes in and brings some coffee. It's almost that good. You want me to be Hazel to serve you? No, Mama. <laughs> I don't drink coffee until I was 40 years old. Well, that's a good time to start, really. Lorraine Maxwell, that's a good time to start. Happy birthday. Thank you, Sharon. Y'all are so kind. We're going to say good night. We've eaten and we've uh, got Boy, chicken yeah. left. Mama, you can have this whole meal again. Oh, wow. There's too, way too much left again. What are I we know. doing? We're, we're cooking too much, Mama. I reckon. It's hard I to only fix four And you all seen how much salad I made. It wasn't too much. Mama had four miscarriages. I had three. Oh, uh, what is it? And then I had new will. She said she, she didn't want no more children. Kimberly, after you. Mama had um, one before and two after. One before and two after me. So I would have been that dreaded middle child. You think I'm a bad only child. Woo! Middle child. I would have maybe been meaner. Maybe birth, I'd had an older brother or sister to get in trouble with. And two to blame it on. I could have gotten that. That's one thing about being only child, folks. If it gets done, you done it. There ain't no blaming it on nobody. Who done this? They don't ask that question. It's just, what have you done? That's right. Where did you put my tools? Hmm. It, it's it's that was guilt. That daddy's favorite saying. Wasn't guilt, <laughs> it's guilt before the trial. You don't even get a trial. You're automatically the guilty bird. Aren't you? Yeah, it usually was, though, wasn't it? I know it, but we've been nice to have some brothers and sisters to blame it on. I'll accept you, Daddy, with Miss Miss Placey's tools. <laughs> Thank you, Daddy. It wasn't you. Have you had my hammer? I said, what did it look like? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was forevermore getting in trouble for messing and gomming and doing something. Forevermore. And still I am, probably. You never was a mean child, just mischievous. <laughs> I just done stuff all the time. Like, I probably did have the hammer because I was probably building a spaceship or something. He, uh, his daddy gave him a cow and it had a calf and she wouldn't take care of it, so he had to feed it with a feed bucket. Uh. And <laughs> that little old calf had followed him everywhere. Mm. And Johnny was little and he's like, I am not your mommy. I've told you, I'm not your mommy. Well, it worked out real good when it was a baby. We had. Dad had given me a cow, a, a heifer. If y'all don't know what a heifer is, it's a young cow that has not had a calf yet. So he didn't know if she was a good mother or not. Well, the first thing she did was kicked it. That was not a good sign. Yeah. And she wouldn't take care of it. She wouldn't even feed it. Uh, we got rid of her too because she couldn't stay here. But we had this calf you know, that we had to raise. So we had a bucket. Um, for feeding it and, uh, and it was yours and you it had was to mine and I had to get up and feed it every morning I had to feed it when I come home uh, you know I was a real farm boy here I had to do the work and um, it was fine when it was little I'd hold that bucket and give a drink and it was happy to see me and it would just run around the yard but when it got bigger and it got bigger than me and it could run me around the yard and get looking for some more no it was rough and uh, we finally, it, it stayed here a while until it weaned and it got and bigger. And you fixed that milk crate on, that, on the shed building out there. <laughs> I had to rig me up a little thing to, I just stick the bucket down in it and let it feed on its own. So, because I couldn't hold it no more. I had to do something. So I probably had a hammer that day for sure. Nailing and a banging on the side of the barn down there trying to get the feed bucket to go. Your daddy said, look out there what he's doing. He said, he's come up with that on his own. 
And he said, and he's got it the right height and everything. He was so I proud measured. <laughs> he was so proud of it. And then he came out and said, don't lose my hammer, boy. Uh, yeah, those was the good days. We used to have cows. I miss the cows. I miss going out of the evenings and hearing them pick. That was always a good thing. Uh, I enjoyed that more as I got older. You don't pay much attention to that when you're a kid. But we always had cows and I always fed cows and we kept up with cows. And it was a good experience. That Learned little calf loved you better than anything. Oh, uh, that little calf thought I was its feeder. It didn't mom. care. He didn't care about mommy, daddy, or nothing else. All he knew, that's the dude with the milk bucket. I'm sure some of y'all know what I'm talking about. I don't think you get my comments. Nancy, I got your comment. This one, anyway. We'll try again. Hello from Carthage, Mississippi. Wow. Beautiful, very warm day today. Well, Nancy wow. Wilkerson, I'm glad I seen this comment. If you've sent some more up, I just miss them. I get about three comments and they're flying. So I try to catch one. It's kind of like catching fish in a stream. I just try to catch one as I go. All right, folks, we're going to say good night. Mama's leaving. See, you got to catch her while she's still sitting. We're going to say good night. Y'all have a wonderful night and have a wonderful tomorrow. No matter what the weather or what it does, just enjoy it. Be glad we're a part of it. And we will say, find you something good to eat. Make you some memories. Yes. And enjoy yourselves a little bit. Laugh a little bit. Laugh a little bit before you go to bed and make you feel good. Make you sleep good. Say good night, Mama. Good night, Mama. And God bless you all. Bye-bye. Bye, bye. bye y'all.